Warning, this is not an endorsement of doing drugs to have a better chance at throwing no-hitters. That is stupid, and believing this makes you stupid too. Don't be stupid. There was once a pitcher who threw a no-hitter while on drugs. I know, I decided to throw the punchline at you right away instead of waiting till the last minute. But I think this story needs that. June 12th, 1970. Pretty big day for Pirates pitcher Doc Ellis. Now, if you don't know who Doc Ellis is, I'll give you some backstory. Ellis was in his third major league season with the Pittsburgh Pirates at this point in time, and he had a pretty decent start to his career. One season away from a fourth place Cy Young finish at 19 and 9, this man wasn't your typical Joe. Now, Doc had some substance abuse issues in his high school years, which eventually carried over in his transition to the big leagues. He signed with the Pirates in 64 and was supposed to get a nice $60,000 signing bonus. Unfortunately for him, that bonus was cut down to $2,500 after being arrested for stealing a car. If it weren't for him deciding to be Trevor from GTA, he would have been a lot richer. On June 10th, two days before his big game, Ellis was granted permission to drive home after a series in San Francisco for an off day and then go back to San Diego the day after to pitch. He found himself crashing at a friend's place on the way to San Diego and decided to take some LSD. He got so high that he lost track of time, and before he knew it, it was June 12th. His scheduled start in San Diego was only a few hours away. So he arrived at the stadium on game day, about an hour and a half before the game was supposed to start, high as a kite, and eager to get the W. Little did his teammates know that Doc had already gotten the W, just a more dangerous type. 6.05 came, and it was game time. Doc Ellis was about to do the unthinkable. He was about to throw the 174th no-hitter in Major League history, more wasted than any of the pitchers to come before him. What happened during the game is nothing short of historic. Ellis says that he remembers the ball sometimes feeling big like a balloon, and at other times being as small as a golf ball, which, to be honest, lines up pretty much with what we expected. But one thing I bet you didn't expect, though, was him thinking that Richard Nixon was behind the plate calling balls and strikes. Yes, President Richard Nixon. Now, instead of going through the game play-by-play, play, I'm going to show you how this game went from Doc's perspective. One intense high, mere hours from waking up, and 27 outs later, Doc Ellis had no hit the San Diego Padres. Now throwing a no hitter on LSD is pretty impressive, right? But throwing a perfect game on LSD, now that's something. Now that's a feat no recorded pitcher has ever accomplished, and the closest one to do it was Doc Ellis. But even he didn't come anywhere close. That's because on June 12th, 1970, Doc Ellis threw a no hitter and walked eight batters. As one would expect, Ellis had a pretty hard time controlling the ball in his condition. He couldn't even tell if a batter was hitting lefty or righty. Pirates catcher Jerry May had to wear reflective tape on his fingers just so Ellis could see his signs. That's one heck of a teammate right there. So this man, walked eight batters, had the 37th president of the United States calling his outing, and threw a no-hitter. This might just be the craziest thing ever. Now this isn't the only crazy experience Doc Ellis had in his career. He once threw at every player in the Reds lineup in 74 because he was angry that the Pirates were intimidated by the Reds. Now this was during the days of the Big Red Machine. He once got pissed at George Steinbrenner and refused to sign his contract with the Yankees. He said the scariest moment of his career was trying to pitch sober in 1973. While he was sober, he couldn't replicate his pitching mechanics. So to fix this, he went and got some coffee with just a pinch of amphetamines so he could perform well. By the time his career was over, this man had a lot of stories to tell. Ellis went on to play nine more seasons after his drug-infused no-hitter, and then called it quits after the 1979 season. After retiring, Ellis had come out and said that he never pitched without the use of drugs, which is just pretty crazy to think about. He eventually went into treatment, and came out on the other side deciding to teach others in prison and treatment centers about the dangers of substance abuse. Which, in my opinion, is a really great way to end Ellis' story here. So that's the story of the man who no-hit the San Diego Padres while high on LSD. I think that might be a worse franchise history note than never winning a World Series, to be completely honest. Once it was discovered that Doc was high during the game, there were people who reached out to talk with him about creating poems and music and such about him and the game. In fact, the song that's been playing in the background since this video started is a song by the SF Seals, and it's called Doc Ellis. So I'm not really sure how to end this video, so I'm just going to tell you guys, don't do drugs. I think that's a good way to end it. Yeah. Two bucks on a black top, that's how